breaking an ankle is no fun. But when you've got plans to fly to your parents' house for Christmas, less than two weeks later, that's a whole new level of stress. In this video, I'm gonna give you tips that I learned on how to make traveling accessible when you're injured. I tried finding some videos here on YouTube to give me some hints on how it would be, but I couldn't really find anything that went into the details that I was looking for. So here I am filling, filling in the gaps with what I learned. For anyone new here, my name is Jelena and I broke my ankle back in December while I was out for a run. We already had plans to fly to Ohio for Christmas, then I broke my ankle. So I had to figure out how to make those plans continue to work. There were so many pieces that I needed to figure out the logistics for, it started getting overwhelming in my mind. So I broke it down step by step and literally walked through in my brain the whole trip and broke it down piece by piece for me to figure out how I was gonna make it through each of those steps. I get pretty anxious flying so breaking everything down step by step and knowing that I was prepared for each of those steps helped ease my mind a bit. Here are all the steps that I needed to work out. One, taking the shuttle from the parking lot near the Denver airport to the terminal. Two, getting out of the shuttle and getting to the ticket counters. Three, getting through security when I can only put weight on one leg. Four, going to the bathroom while waiting for our plane to board. Five, getting on and off the plane. Six, going to the bathroom during the flight. Seven, getting from the plane to the baggage claim area and then outside to the arrivals area. Eight, getting around at my parents' house. They also have a two-story house and all of the bedrooms and showers are located upstairs. Nine, getting around an amusement park and a zoo for four to five hours each. See, I told you it was overwhelming. The airlines will allow you to check an assistive device for free. So I was planning on taking both the knee scooter and my crutches. Then my parents said they were able to borrow a brand new wheelchair from my aunt's mother-in-law. So I decided to leave the knee scooter at home and just travel with my crutches. I would be able to use the crutches to help me get on and off the shuttle because the bus is required to be accessible. So I wouldn't have to worry about hobbling up and down a bunch of stairs with the crutches. Next up, I called our airline and told them that I was gonna need assistance at the airport because I broke my ankle and requested a wheelchair. I requested a wheelchair because it's exhausting going long distances with crutches. Plus, my foot got swollen and was really painful if I stood for more than a couple of minutes. And getting through an airport like Denver, it takes more than a couple of minutes, so that would have been really uncomfortable and painful. So the wheelchair request was added to my ticket and they also put in a request for an aisle wheelchair. Yes, they've got really narrow wheelchairs that fit down the aisle on the airplanes. So you would transfer from the normal sized wheelchair to this narrow little aisle wheelchair on the airplane. So now all I had to do was crutch in from the shuttle into the terminal. It was gonna be a little bit of a hike, but it would be doable. Since I was getting a wheelchair and was bringing my crutches along, I decided to bring the crutches with me onto the airplane because I didn't know if I had to go to the bathroom during the flight how easy it would be to have someone bring that aisle wheelchair to me in the middle of a flight, and then how easy it would be getting out of that and into the bathroom and back. I know I'm skipping around a little bit, but getting that wheelchair, it covers a couple of these steps. So next up, I'm gonna talk about getting through security. A friend of mine told me to contact TSA Cares and let them know that I was gonna need special assistance getting through security. There's actually a website for TSA Cares and it asks you to fill out the information at least 72 hours in advance of your flight. And it asks for information like your flight numbers, both for departing and returning and what kind of assistance that you need. I just wrote in it that I had a broken ankle and I wouldn't be able to walk through the metal detector or stand in the body scanner on my own. I filled out the form about a week and a half before we left and I never heard anything from TSA in Denver and I didn't hear anything from TSA in Columbus until we were halfway through our trip and it was just a couple days before we were scheduled to fly back home. It didn't seem like it really mattered much that I filled this out ahead of time because at both ends of the trip, uh, when I got to security, they didn't have like a list where they had my name and were expecting me and they totally weren't prepared for me to be coming through. In Denver, the guy that was wheeling me in the wheelchair, he wheeled us up to the front of the line to get our IDs and boarding passes checked. And then we stood in line to wait to go through the metal detectors because we've got 
our daughter and they don't send her through the body scanner. We get to go through the metal detectors with her. But since I couldn't stand, I had to sit in the wheelchair and wait for a woman to come out and get me and then do a individual pat down on me. I ended up sitting there and waiting for probably like 10 minutes. And finally, a woman came up and she wheeled me through and took me over to the side, said she was gonna do the individual pat down and explained everything she was gonna do, asked if I wanted a private room. And I said, no, I declined because I had already waited long enough for someone to actually acknowledge and take me through it. So they just kind of wheeled me to the side and did the pat down there. She also put a cloth on a wand and wiped it all over my cast and the wheelchair to have it tested, I guess, to make sure there weren't any bad substances on either of them. So once I passed through that, then we headed to the gate. The guy wheeled us all the way over to our gate. He transferred me from the wheelchair into the accessible seats right next to the ticket counter, and he left. I was glad I brought my crutches because then I could go to the bathroom while we were waiting to board and not have to have John be my crutch and have him help me over to a family bathroom and help me in there so that I could go. Once it was time to board, we didn't really see anybody at the gate until they were actively boarding the plane. So I didn't get to ask about the aisle wheelchair. I figured since I had my crutches with me, I would just use those to try and get to my seat. Turns out it really wasn't too bad. I just had to position them in a narrow kind of stance and just take little small steps going down the aisle on the airplane. Then I took the window seat so that I could kind of turn to the side during the flight and rest my back up against the wall and window and then put my foot up in John's lap so that it would be elevated. I had to keep my crutches with me at my seat until everybody had boarded the plane and then the flight attendants requested that we put them up in the overhead bin for the flight. Once we arrived in Columbus, I just had to crutch my way down the aisle to get off the airplane and right as I got off the plane, there was a guy waiting there with a wheelchair for me. He wheeled me down to the baggage claim area and waited with me while we were waiting for our luggage to arrive and then wheeled me outside to the arrivals area and then I got out of the wheelchair so that he could leave and go home. Then I just had to crutch from the bench, a few steps to the curb and hop in my parents' car to go to their house. As I mentioned, my parents borrowed a wheelchair for me so once we were at their house, I used that to wheel myself around on the main floor. To make it easier to maneuver around and get through doorways, while we were in the house, they took the footrests off. Then that also made it easier for me to use my good foot to scoot myself around. The stair steps at my parents' house turned out to be a lot less deep than the stairs at our house. So it was a lot more difficult crutching my way up them. After one nervous attempt, I decided to just try scooting up and down the stairs on my butt. And since they had lower banisters at both the top and the bottom of the stairs, it made it a lot easier. So I did the good old butt scoot up and down the stairs the whole time we were there. To shower, I had to use my parents' shower because the main bathroom that I usually would use in their house, it is a tub and they've got shower doors. So the track for the shower doors makes it a lot more painful and difficult to attempt to get your way into the tub. They luckily have a detachable shower head too, but they don't have any kind of bench inside the shower. I ended up using a step stool to sit on and I just left the shower door open a little bit and stuck my leg or my foot outside of the shower. I did bring one of the waterproof covers, but I was still kind of paranoid about water running down into it. So I kept it out to try to keep it as dry as possible. Then I had John hang out in the bathroom while I was showering. So when I needed to use both hands to like wash my hair or wash my body, I would just hand the shower head to him and he would hold it and he would aim it at me to spray some warm water on me so I could stay warm and keep it aimed off of wherever I was washing. Most importantly, I needed him to help me get up when I was done. The step stool was pretty low to the ground and there weren't any ledges or handles or anything to help me get upright. So after a few failed attempts at me trying to get up on my own, he reached down and I grabbed his hand and he pulled me up so that I could stand and get out of the shower. Before I broke my ankle, we were already planning to go to Kings Island's Winterfest because my parents took my sister and I to it many times when we were younger and we always had so much fun. And Mael is now tall enough to ride the two roller coasters that are open during it. Once I broke my ankle, I just had to make a few adjustments. I looked on the website to see what I was allowed to ride 
And basically, I could ride everything except for the roller coasters. I was kind of bummed, but I realized it would have been really painful having my cast bump around on the twists and turns and stuff on a roller coaster, so not being allowed to do that is a good call. It also said that you can check in at guest services to get a pass for riding the rides that you're permitted to. So when we arrived, we checked in at guest services and it's basically just a sheet of paper and it lists the rides that you're permitted to ride and you take that up to the attendant at the exit of each ride that you want to get on. There's a grid on the back of it, so the attendant at the exit, they write down what ride you're about to get on and then the time that you're allowed to get on to the next ride following that one. The time they always put down was just 10 minutes after the time that they were signing that sheet. So by the time they signed it, I got on the ride, the ride cycled, and I got back off. The 10 minutes was already up, so I could pretty much just go immediately to the next ride to ride it. The only downside is you're only allowed to bring three people with you, and we had six people total in our party. So two people had to sit out on any of the rides that we were going to the front of the line for. It ended up working out for the most part because my mom and sister get pretty sick on the spinny rides, so they skipped out on a lot of those. One other major thing that I had to figure out with going to the amusement park and the zoo was how to stay warm. We were going to be outside for a lot of the time, and it was winter time in Ohio. The forecast for the day we were going to go to Winterfest was the high was going to be in the mid-40s, but then it was going to be cooler as it got to be evening and nighttime. Since I was going to be sitting in a wheelchair for the entire time, I couldn't even rely on like walking around a little bit to help get the blood flowing and keep me a little bit warm. I knew that I needed to dress in a lot of layers, so I brought plenty of layers with me, but my dad was really worried about my toes sticking out of my cast and how those were going to stay warm. I could slide a slipper sock over the toes, but he was worried that that wouldn't be warm enough. So we went to the basement, rooted around, and came up with this shiny insulated bubble wrap and put that over my foot and tested it out. It got my foot hot wearing it on the couch for a few minutes, so we were pretty hopeful that that would help. We waited until we got to the park or the zoo and I already had the slipper on and then we put the insulated bubble wrap on over that and then duct taped it tight to the cast. It looked hilarious <laughs> and we called it hammy because it looked like I was smuggling a roast ham, but it worked. I got some weird looks from people wondering what the heck was on my foot because I had that shiny bubble wrap on the bottom part of my foot and then my pants went down and covered up the rest of my cast so they couldn't see my cast. They just saw hammy sticking out. Other than wearing hammy, I just dressed in layers knowing that I was going to be out in the cold for a few hours and then we also brought a snuggie for me to wear as a blanket. Thankfully the temps weren't too frigid so I didn't have to bundle up in it, I just wore the blanket across my lap. Once I got all these things mostly figured out, I could feel my anxiety lessening. It was definitely worth it to put in all of this extra planning. I hope this helps you better know what to expect and how to plan for traveling not just with a broken ankle, but with any kind of mobility issues. If you've liked this series so far, and you'd like to see how rehab goes on my ankle, let me know down in the comments below. If you happen to have missed the first video in this series of how I broke my ankle and hacks for getting around the house with a cast, Click on the video right up here. Thank you so much for watching.